Greetings and welcome to Factorio. I'm D-Gray and today we continue our entry level 2 megabase where in the last episode just massively expanded out the production in our base making sure that we have enough iron, copper, green circuits and steel flowing down the line. In today's episode we'll start to work towards electric engine units which is needed for flying robot frames and we'll probably get batteries as well which is also needed for flying robot frames. So um, that is the plan for today's episode. If you think that's a good idea, do remember to leave a like on the video. And if new to the channel, do remember to subscribe as well. And with that, let's get on with today's episode. So um, if we look at electric engines, it is a pretty simple recipe requiring electric circuits, engine units and lubricants. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio between engine units and electric engines. So what I want to do is um, utilize a bit of blueprinting. So if you steal this little setup here, pretty much down to about here where we take out the steel and uh, use that over here. It's a lot easier to, to plan out things when, uh, when you know where things line up. So as you can see, it lines up about should be about here a thing will be correct so if we line that up as uh, the starting point for example right here it will be quite easy for us to uh, to get in the things we need so uh, let's just quickly hook up the things here's the iron we'll need a ton of steel going this way and the other things are flowing right here and again this is one of the powers of uh, of doing a uh, blueprints. It's very quickly and very easy to set up uh, productions going forward if they have some kind of similarities. For example right here it is uh, the engines which is going to be needed a one-to-one -one ratio anyway. So we'll just add in things we need and uh, quickly get that up and running. There we are. This way. Split off the iron. Start to make these. There we are. So that is uh, pretty much half of what we need for electric engines. Of course, still need to get more steel flowing. Is it on the top line? That's green circuit, so that's just going to continue across. That's perfect. And steel is... Did we never get this hooked up again? Oh yeah, it's right here. About to say if we didn't hook it up, that would have been a weird mistake. Well, let's get you down the line. I'm ready to be used. As we do know, we need the green circuits as well. And let's go up this way. And there we are. That is our electric motors being made, or just engines even, is what I'm trying to say. So now, electric engines. I want to use our direct insertion for it, as that makes it a bit easier to manage. So if we do this, do we have enough room for what we need to flow in? Firstly, we'll need the engine units over. We can easily do that with a longhand inserter. But we also need to get in um, the lubricant. And there is a few ways to do that. If you want to make it somewhat compact, we need two lines in. We need belts in for... Um, what's it called for... Um, the green circuits and we need to get pipes in as well so what we could do I'm not quite sure this will work but if we do a pipe here pipe down and uh, jump across will that give us enough room if we do something like this as if I take you and so you'll jump and so you'll go there this is just theory crafting 
might not be able to. Then you can jump something like that. Because that leaves room for that one and that one. And even leaves room for a power pole. Oh, yeah. And then on the outside here, we can grab the green circuits. That actually looked like that will work. Green circuits in, getting grabbed. Fluids this way, getting in. So a nice and compact build that we can just kind of step down up this way. That's hopefully going to work the way I am planning it. Oh, let's go grab some more um, assembly machines. So um, as simple as that, we should almost have our electric engines flowing. Actually, a lot simpler, or a lot easier than I had planned. But that is uh, good once in a while to uh, be surprised that way. So into our mall. How's it looking? No trees, that should be fine. Let's grab some of you. We have enough inserts, so we probably need a few more belts. We can add in some of all this iron we don't really need too much of. There we are. And let's grab... I'm gonna go, to go get a few grenades in case we have to blow up some trees that's in the way. We have enough view, we have enough inserters, we have enough simple machines. So that is mighty fine. And we have enough pipes. So now we just need to hook things up. And we have electric units, or electric engines running. Again, you can see the power of making things modular. You can easily hook things up very, very quickly. Not having to spend days on figuring out how um, how the inputs are going to look. You can pretty much just do this. To the end. Oh, did I miss something up with uh, some pipes? Might have missed something up. That seems fine. Weird. There we are, that's all the pipes. Then we need all the undergrounds. Going max range. There we are. Our balls. And getting you to add him in here. There we are, and... Oh, that is very compact. I think that might be the most compact I've ever made this, uh, this setup. So um, now to grab in green circuits and fluids, or lubricant even. So let's grab the green circuits first. That needed to be grabbed from about here. You go up that way. Don't mind it taking a bit more room because we want to make room for um, the fluids as well. So if we do this, these go in, let's split you out, and upwards to the left, and there we are. So green circuits sorted, and lubricant, let's get you sorted as well. Get you and see how far down it was he hooked you up. Right here. And lubricant flowing back up into this line. And we should have electric engine units being made in record time. So these will just go on a little belt going out of it. Let's see, you don't produce very fast, so we can just get normal inserters. Giving it a bit of power. And voila. So uh, this is a very nice setup that will easily supply what we need for engines. Of course, we can't really expand it out more because of... Uh, well, don't have room for a second one of these. We can always add one in. But uh, there we are. Electric units. So the next thing I wanted to get done 
is the batteries. And batteries requires sulfuric acid, which we haven't hooked up yet. But luckily, iron, sulfur, and water is pretty much things we have on the main bus. But if you look at the amount of sulfur that's being needed, and needed even, I kind of want to um, hook it up somewhere else. Um, for that, I'm thinking if I want to expand this out even more, doing two-sided, but uh, I can mark the, make the room for it just to be sure. So if we do that here, press G even. What's it? F? F? We can actually look at that, how easy we can uh, split this one on. So we'll leave it there, just in case you want a massive setup in the future. We'll just have it. So the next thing over I want to hook up is pretty much, as I said, our um, sulfuric acid production. For that, we'll need to get some sulfur in. Because that is easier to manage in terms of throughput and not uh, limiting what we have going in. So sulfur produces two every one second. This requires five every one second. And getting three of these to hook up to one of these is kind of annoying. So if you do a two to one, it's, it's much easier to manage. So uh, look at a little setup here. Let's say we just start. Let's see how much room do we need. Do something like that. That should make sure we can do long hand in between these. Do that. You will make sulfuric acid. And if you look at this, the setup we need is uh, is close to the setup we have over here in terms of getting pipes in and such. So um, if you do this. Then we can do the underground as we did before here to there. Ooh, but it can't reach those two, so it's not quite the same way. I have to move it down one, but that should be fine. Why don't you start um what if you do here to here? Yeah, because we only have one that makes it a bit harder to set up for some reason. Also, if we have, let's see if we have water flowing here, as we did before. We need to go into this one. We also need this one to be able to grab that, so we can actually just do it this way, I'm guessing. And you can go... Well, yeah, well, you can go this way instead, then. That'd be water going in. We will have you grab the iron into this one. And full sulfur is coming from there. And that way we can easily hook it up like that to continue down the line. Let's just get you there to make sure it's filled. How does that look? As it should work, giving us sulfuric acid out. In, in a pretty good way. Then we just need double inputs over here for water. So, oh no, we knew, ooh, we need to split these up a bit. Else they can't be this close to each other. Let's dismantle this and do it correctly. That was something I completely overlooked. Maybe that makes it easier to set up. Let's hope. And we do it here instead, like that. That means we only have this spot for long-handed. means we'll still have the water flowing this way. I think that's still the correct choice. But what can we do with the undergrounds then? Not a lot, so that's actually a bit annoying. But it gives us a lot of room in between to actually just split it off, going into the middle and, and grabbing it. Because it does take this much room. So for example, if you do this, you can jump to here. Then we'll do a little split off. 
you can go in between this way. And in theory, just get long handers to grab him. Something like that. How does that look? Doesn't that look somewhat good? I think it's pretty good. Then over here, we can do undergrounds instead. Something like that. Could in theory do undergrounds here as well, instead of the long row of pipes. Make it look a bit better. I love fear crafting these things. It's so good. And if you do you, then you'll just fit in right there. And we probably don't need you on this side just yet. Can we make you one longer? We can. Perfect. So how does that look? Because then we should do one, one, two, one, two. And hook this up in a nice orderly way. Yeah, that looks... I'm pretty pleased with this. Otherwise, can we just have one here in the middle? And be that lucky in terms of powering it as well. Let's see you get some power over here to see it works. I guess power for everything. That makes the output go. This makes the inputs. We just need to hook up the fluid now. Could in theory just go here on the inside. We'd actually move this one to the left if you wanted to. actually leaves us enough room to move one to the left. Well, let's not make it too compact, but in theory, this entire row here, you could uh, could skip and move one to the left. But uh, let's keep it for now, because what I want to do then is... Uh, can you reach that far? You can. Doing that for the water in. And that will be a modular setup. That uh, should be able to just be taken like this, placed right here. And that is double the, the input. Okay, let's let's hook this up. That looks mighty fine. Do comment what you think about the, this little setup. Because I actually, I'm actually quite pleased with it. To be honest. Oh, we still need one belt in between, it seems, to make it completely modular. So right. There is... Uh, what does need to be modular because of uh, the one space, because of that pipe. So now to gather all the resources we need. We can take water here and split it both ways. Will probably be the easiest. So what if we have water coming out? Let's say... Somewhere around here? What if water comes in there? Then it splits off that way. Goes over and in this way. And then we'll have whatever resource we need, that being the iron. Going right here. There we are. Please split off the iron. You jump from here. That fits so nicely. Input property, option to the left. Making sure we get all the iron in we need. The sulfur is coming from here, so that's fine as well. And then we just need water and petroleum. I think we should be able to just... Oh. Take this one and scroll a few, because I think we have one of the pipes in length. There we are, where we know it lines up. Let's see, it'll be lining up right there. Then we just need to find the water. And the petroleum. There'll be water going in. Very, very good. There, there. Remove these, please. That's water for both of these. And then we just need the petroleum for this line. Let's see, do we have one we can take? 
Right here we have one. And that seems good. Can we skip you? We can. Perfect. And petroleum, please come with me. And there we are. That should be that working. So now we have all of our sulfur machine going. That goes into spheric acid, into the pipe. And that is pretty much the setup we're going to go with. Just need to go grab a few more. Let's handcraft the last one we need, just because I don't want to go and get one. There we are. Let's hook up this. Yeah, a few more pipes. And then I think this is uh, is looking very, very good. Of course, this is all modular, so we can expand it out. I think you know what the theme of how I'm building is always modular. As that looks uh, very, very good. Oh, there we are. More spheric acid going out. And voila! A setup, very compact, doing exactly what we want. If we need more, we can always mirror this blueprint over here. Oh, that mirror function is, is so good in terms of uh, setting things up. It makes it so much easier to do. But um, let's take one for now. We can always expand it down way, way more if needed. So the next thing I want to hook up was the last thing for a flying robot frames, and that is the batteries. And batteries, very, very easily. Four seconds, 20 seconds, so it's a five to one. So uh, we should just sit up somewhere else because we'll also need these four accumulators back at the mall when, uh, when we get it going. Let's quickly travel to the mall. I'll just go and pick up a few things and then we'll be right back. And we're back again, guys. So I just went and picked up a few chemical plants, cleared out a bit of trees in case we need the room for the new sulfuric acid, and dragged the belts down here so we uh, have what we need for um, our batteries. So batteries, very, very simple. Two inputs with sulfuric acid. So let's just take it over here. For example, let's just start you... You can start about here, I think. Looking at batteries, we'll need fluids and we'll need the other one. In theory, a mixed belt of copper and iron will be more than enough, so that's kind of what I want to go with. For example, right here. Let's do four, so make sure we line it out correctly. And um, I want to do it this way. You can jump those two, because that way we can have belts going up this way and jumping across to uh, to the next one. You two go together, you two go together. That means you'll go up this way. And let's, let's do it like this. That makes, makes it look a bit better. And that should make sure that we can actually expand this out up top. We can. With these going uh, for everything they need there to here. So um, now that we have this, we can get the inputs where we need them. We can get, well, let's, can we actually do this instead to save on the belts? Can we jump from here to there? Yeah, just like that. Getting the inputs, iron and copper, and copper, iron and copper. Get the spheric acid flowing in. Very symmetrical and nice. And getting the power poles to power all of this. Here and there. Let's just get you powered up. That's all the inputs we need. We just need this one to go over here. Couldn't fear drag it across. 
But as we've done before, let's take it down to the main line and give it its own spot. And it does make it a lot easier to manage in the future, in case you want to copy paste over the, the setups. So where do we have a spot? We have lubricant at one, two, three. So the fourth one here should be empty. So about here will be fine. I think that's correct. Let's strike these two so we know that oh, the correct edge. Oh, start and stop point. There we go. Getting sulfuric acid in with a little one of you on it. Having everything we need. Of course we need to drag it back up here again. So it might be a bit wasteful to do this, but it looks so much better. And since we have the room for it, go all the way to him. You could. That is what we're gonna do. So sulfuric acid is going into the batteries. The next thing we need is uh, it's just the last thing: the iron and copper on a mixed line. We can actually mix it, maybe something like this. You'll go here. I'll just get you out that way. So do something like that to go in. Then you will get out down here and jump up and then this way. Upwards to the left. So there we are. That is all the batteries we need going in, being produced. Let's just expand this out a small amount to uh, get the rest hooked up. And you can go there and there. And let's take you. Let's see if you're modular. Oh, it looks very modular. Let's just double the throughput of uh, what we can do for batteries, as I don't want to run out just yet. And as I think I've been saying a few times, if you can double it this easily, then from 4 to 8 is 100%, of, then you need to go from 8 to 16 to get a doubling again. So the first few times you add in new is, uh, is very, very uh, cost efficient in terms of uh, throughput. And there we are. So, um... I think this is a pretty decent place to stop. We have gotten all of our basic uh, things done for our flying robot frames. So um, that will probably be what we'll mess around with next episode. Also getting to the point where we can actually make uh, construction robots. And we should probably get um, into process a power armor quite soon as well. Just to get um, those going. Or at least make a modular armor with um, what's it called? personal rope on in so next episode we will make the flying robot frames and play around with uh, with robots so um thank you so much for watching guys hopefully you leave a like on the video and do comment what you think about these setups i think they work quite quite well and uh yeah we'll we'll probably double some of this going forward but for now at least it's looking very very good that's the thing. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Do remember to like the video. And if you're new to the channel, do remember to subscribe as well. And with that, I've been Decrain, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.